Hi guys, summer 2024 and our tower farm is banging with prolific crops that are just giving us the most abundant crop yield ever. Let me show you what is growing. Starting with tomatoes. Well, should I just call this a tomato avalanche or maybe a tomato cascade or I don't know. But when it comes to tomatoes, we build special grow cages to trellis the tomatoes in order to optimize the crop yield. Well, this is the classic Genovese basil. That's your pesto tower, basically. This is red Batavia lettuce, and it's the perfect lettuce to grow during the hot month of the summer. Let me show you this beautiful basil called Nufar basil, which is very highly resistant to fusarium and to mildew. It's a very highly recommended variety of basil when again growing outdoors. Okay here we have a beautiful Toscano kale also referred to as dinosaur kale and this one is the one we recommend to grow when again farming outdoors in the summer. Not only it's the only type of kale you can grow outdoors in the heat but to a larger extent it's the only brassica that we can grow successfully in the middle of the summer heat. This is Green Batavia, also known as Summer Chris, perfect during the summer months, very resistant to heat conditions. It is important to mention that all the crops that we grow feature as high of a nutrient density as the best ever tested with crops grown in the soil. Allow me to introduce you to this bee magnet. This is a marjoram tower. Marjoram is the cousin um, of oregano. In fact, you cannot Oh yeah, when you smell it, you can tell the difference, but when you look at it, not really. This is becoming a true bee magnet because we let it go to flower and uh, it's highly recommended to do that, to bring lots of bees to your farm when farming outdoors and to get the entire farm pollinated, regardless of the crops you grow. And here we have one of my very, very favorite crops, Kang Kong, Kang Kong. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it because there are so many different pronunciations throughout Asia. So sorry to my Asian friends, but show you this one. This is the plant that we use, the crop that we use to make morning glory in Thailand. Uh, people are kind of familiar with that recipe. But from the Philippines to Thailand, from Indonesia to you name it, Cambodia and all the others. Sorry if I forgot your country, but it's one of the main staple. This is Thai basil right before going to flower stage. This is when you should harvest it. And here, okay, obviously more Thai basil. What can I say? We're totally obsessed when it comes to Thai basil, but we're very much obsessed when it comes to Thai cooking. Okay, more Kang Kong, Kong Kong. Look at this obscene sage tower. I mean, just so overgrown, so beautiful, so fragrant, and we're gonna keep it here for a while because of course we're going to harvest the sage, but for the time being, this is one of the best mosquito repellent you can put into your tower farm. Well, this is a bean tower. I don't know exactly what type of beans, but I know that those are bush beans, meaning that they create those plants like this and the beans are just against the tower like this. They just create bush beans, like a little bush, and it stays within the realm of the tower. We advise to grow bush beans when using our tower technology, rather than pole beans. The pole beans are those that are gonna grow alongside the trellis and give vines that are about anywhere between 10 to 20 feet. The bush beans are gonna stay within the tower like that and give a very generous crop yield again. These are zucchinis, also known in Europe as courgettes, in the early stage of growth. And those are zucchini plants that have reached maturity. Check out this beautiful yellow zucchinis here. And we even have on the same tower an interesting cucurbit, which is the paddy pan yellow squash. And here we're growing six different types of eggplants from varieties ranging from Asia to Europe. Eggplants are so easy to grow. They are disease resistant and they give a very generous crop yield. On this tower, we're growing six different types of Asian eggplants. By the way, there are over 50 different types of eggplants, but let me just show you one of them that I really particularly like. Okay. Now we have the summer emerald eggplant. It's, this one is from China and it's just like wonderful for cooking. It's firm, it's flavorful. Um, whether you bake it, grill it, it doesn't matter. Here we are growing a mini tomato variety 
that is a determinate tomato variety. With tomatoes, you have two types. You have the determinate varieties, such as this one, where all the tomatoes are ready at the same time and where you need to harvest all the tomatoes in one shot versus the indeterminate tomatoes, such as the Sakura tomatoes I showed you earlier, that will start fruiting and keep on fruiting during three to six months at a time, depending on the tomato variety. Here we have another tomato cage where we're growing these big heirloom black tomatoes. How about heirloom accordion tomatoes? Look at this beauty. Here we have a tower with cayenne pepper in this early stage, and those are just sweet peppers. Well, they need about, I would say, an extra month before starting to give fruits. When it comes to cooker beets that grow as crawling vines, such as cucumbers, gourds, melons, we also use oversized custom-made grow cages to accommodate the growth of the vine and to optimize the crop yield. For example, check out this very original and crazy gourd here that is called the snake bean gourd. It's kind of a weird vegetable because you eat it like a cucumber, although it's a gourd. It can reach up to two and a half meter long. We're talking about eight feet long. It's crazy. Now, let me show you the cucumbers that we have here. We have some Japanese suyo cucumbers growing here. Very different type of cucumber, very long type of cucumber. Here we have some... Oh, those are, it's another Japanese one. This one is the unagi cucumber, very smooth. Very similar to the classic European market more cucumber, but different, juicier and tastier. Now here we have like some pickling cucumbers, more Itachi cucumbers, more suyo cucumbers. Let's go on the other side. I'm gonna show you because I think we have different varieties on the other side. Oh, and we do. Now, this is another Japanese cucumber variety by the name of Itachi cucumbers. And on top here, it's a market more. That's the classic one you will find in every store. Oh, I forgot one type of cucumbers. Check this out. Very, very different. Those are called dragon eggs cucumbers. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you will subscribe to our channel to see more content concerning vertical farming with aeroponic towers. <music>